So you were looking at the Viair High Flow 200 PSI Air Source Kit. This is their top of the line air source package, basically the 480C compressor attached to the top of the two gallon tank. It is part number 20008. You can purchase it from several different places. Viair is the premium name in portable onboard air systems. I'm going to be using this to power um, an air truck in the back that will give me access to, you know, filling up tires as well as the airbag in my goose box hitch. But it also will have a splitter going off to what I call a distracted driver warning system. You guys can probably figure out what that is. It is a really, really nice system. Viar is known for their quality compressor systems. Most people will brag about how good their Viar system is. It's really the only brand that I prefer. Now I say that, but I have a really cheap onboard air system that I'm currently using and it was actually given to me as a gift about a year ago. It is a Viking based system which uses a Viking tank and pump. I've been wanting to remove it for some time because I just don't trust it. I've heard of a lot of issues where the tank starts to rust and the compressor goes out and I really don't want that to happen so I'm upgrading to what I consider to be the best in class version for onboard air. Now I didn't go with the separate tank because I want to put this in the same place that that I have the Viking system, which is at the very front of my bed, right behind the wheel well. I know a lot of people mount these tanks underneath their vehicles and they mount the compressor separately, but I like this whole system where everything's combined into one. That way I don't have to fabricate any extra brackets or really do anything special. I simply provide it power and ground and I'm good to go. Now I'm going to be using 8 gauge all copper cable to run from the compressor all the way to my number 5 or 6 upfitter switch which is designed to be used with up to 40 amps worth of continuous power. So that's the route I'm going to go. I'm going to have to rewire some of my upfitter switches simply because I'm using them for other things but when I'm done cleaning all of it up it's going to provide the right amount of power, actually an excessive amount of power if needed to this system. So I'm going to go and get started Let's show you the system that I currently have in place. So this is the Viking pump that I currently have in here. This onboard air, you might want to call it, has a one and a half gallon tank, but you can see that it's already rusting. It's only been in here maybe six months. So even though I got it about a year ago, I just finally put it in about six months ago. And you can just see the condition that it's in. The other thing is that it's also supposed to be at 150 PSI and it's only at 40. So I have some type of an air leak somewhere in the system. And I've been wanting to remove this to upgrade it to a higher quality unit. So finally have the opportunity to do so. So the first thing I need to do is remove this system. So I'm gonna purge the air from it by simply taking off this little quick release valve from the, uh, the hose that's currently going to the accessory. So to remove these, some people have a lot of challenge with it. You simply push the hose in, pull the collar this way, and then pull the hose out. And now all the air is out of the tank. So if I were to start the vehicle now, because this is connected to my number one upfitter, which is on, the pump would try to fill up. And of course, there's nothing connected to it to fill up. So I'm going to cut my zip ties. So this is 12 gauge wire, I'm going to be removing this wire and replacing it with 8 gauge wire which is required by the new compressor. So if you want to see the difference between the two systems, Viair, Viking, 200 psi, 150 psi, 2 gallon tank, 1.5 gallon tank, much longer duty cycle, pretty horrible duty cycle, rust on the tank, the finish is already coming off. I mean, this is just a far superior product. It's really what I should have gone with in the first place. But again, that was a gift, so you don't want to turn down a gift. Now, I have a few additional accessories that will be going in as well. I have a inline pressure regulator that will let me regulate the pressure down to 150 PSI because one of the accessories I have is limited to that. I have a couple uh, valves. These are elbow fittings. And I have the chuck that will give me the ability to connect a quick connect airline to fill up tires or use to fill up the airbag in the uh, goose box hitch. So just a quick update. I found out that I don't have all the parts I need. Um, there was a, a mix up in some part numbers and I received some of the wrong parts. So instead of these, I'm supposed to have 
some more of these compression fittings right here. So basically I need a compression fitting to go into my regulator. This comes with one quarter inch compression fitting, which will go out of here into a T-splitter. That will accept quarter inch on one side. It'll send a quarter inch out to my uh, accessory. Then it will send another quarter inch out to this air truck, which will receive it back here. So I'm missing one quarter inch compression fitting. I'm missing my T-splitter as well as I need a 3 8 inch line to go into this tank. I thought this was going to be a quarter inch line out, but it's not. So I need a 3 8 inch inner diameter line to come out of the tank, go into a reducer, which will reduce it to a quarter inch line, so it will go into my pressure regulator. Then from my pressure regulator to the T-fitting, then it will split off to the accessory as well as my air truck in the back, and that's going to essentially be what I need. Now, I will need to fabricate some way of mounting this to the, uh, to the bed so I can quickly access it for my air fitting. So, a bunch of little projects I'm going to have to do. Hopefully, I can get all of this wrapped up relatively quickly, but I am going to have to order some parts. So, there will be a part two to this video. What I can do is go ahead and mount the tank and the compressor in the bed and have it ready to go. Okay, so what I did here was I put the tank where the old tank was. I have this little rubber isolator pad that I put beneath it. And then I just hit it with some white spray paint real quick so I could see where the holes were to mount the Vi Air tank. So that's where I know to drill, and then I can drop the holes through. I already went under the truck to make sure that it's not going to make contact with any fuel lines or anything important. It's completely clear under there, so I don't have anything to worry about. And there was the original hole from the Viking tank when I mounted it. So some people would consider me crazy for drilling into an $85,000 truck, but you know, it's not really that big of a deal. Once you've drilled through a pickup truck before, you've kind of drilled through them all. So it's kind of just making that first hole. And then once you're through, the rest of them are pretty much committed. So yeah, that was pretty easy. So I don't know if you can see, but I have all four bolts dropped in and they're going through the bottom now. So I just need to go underneath and secure them. Once they're secured, I can paint all this black again. Just hit it with a real quick hit of black spray paint. So it's the next day. Let me show you what we did. So we ran the eight gauge power cable. This is pure copper power cable. It's not the copper coated aluminum. This is the stuff you want. This isn't actually connected. I'm waiting for my new hose fittings and all the different adapters I'm gonna need to convert this from 3 8 inch to quarter inch. I have the pressure regulator which still needs to be put on, the T-splitter which needs to be put on, as well as the air truck which will be mounted up in this area right here. And this will give me really quick access to an air connection. I may run it actually towards the end of the bed, but the pump fit in really well. I really don't need to trim any of this carpeted area down here simply because I don't mind it being folded back and if I ever remove the pump it'll fold over that area. It's isolated really well. It's already connected. All the power connections are made. This line right here is actually the one going up to the toolbox that I used for the 12 volt jack that I installed on the back of the toolbox. So once all the rest of the components come in, I'll make all my connections and this thing will be wrapped up really quickly. It is very well attached to the bed of the truck so I don't have to worry about it moving or sliding around. But it is a very good looking system. It fits perfectly as well. There's probably three quarters of an inch between the end of this main line to the back of the toolbox. And there's probably about a half an inch between the, the tank and the fender here. So everything really lined up and fit perfectly. Anyways guys, stay tuned for part two. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you again very soon.